I'm going to start sharing my screen. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, see it, Mary. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. Um, so before I actually go into the step two um, of the model, I'm going to actually recap what we did in our workshop one, uh, because we have made a few improvements here. So I just want to share those improvements before we move ahead. So if you remember in workshop one, we were talking about calculating the annual unit cost for operations and maintenance, capital cost, and then putting all that together to come up with the total cost of ownership. So in the annual operating and maintenance cost, what we have added is previously, we just had the life cycle activities for process side, so for roads only. What we have included now is examples for facilities as well. So here we have like, for example, an operations yard and we have life cycle activities like utilities. The other example we have is janitorial services where it's by contract. So we don't have individual asset or cost categories, it's by contract. So we have a lump sum amount in here. Similar here, we have inspections. Again, we have service contracts. So we've added those total costs in here, which is what we had explained in our workshop one as well, that if you do not have details, you can add the lump sum amount it here as well. And then at the end over here, because these calculations is by asset class, how much of these costs would be pertaining to that particular asset class? You wanna put a percentage in here, similar to what we did for roads. Like we have daily road uh, patrols as an example, and the asset class we were looking into was the HCB urban road, and only 15% of this cost would be applicable to HCB urban road. So that's similar to the facilities as well. But we had a few examples here on inspections, uh, on the janitorial services, and we've added extra uh, life cycle templates in here as well, if needed. The other thing that we did um, in addition was actually add a tab three for facilities only. So tab three that we had previously was for uh, process where you would put your life cycle strategy. So in this case, the HCB urban road, we had a life cycle strategy put in here. So these costs were basically calculating for the HCB road only. What we have done is added an extra tab and this is just for facilities. So we have similar input that you require in for process side, similar input for facilities, but this is based on what we require for facilities. For example, we have under quantities, we have the square footage. We've added a replacement cost because when we calculate the ca capital cost per unit over here, what we have assumed is we have the operating cost here, we have maintenance costs here, and what we have assumed is obviously there's going to be a one-time cost for construction. And then there's going to be the life cycle strategy. Now, the life cycle strategy or requirements that we would need over the life of the asset will go up and down. So we have assumed and we've taken a Sherman Durgus model concept that over time we would be using approximately two-thirds of the replacement value of the building as the life cycle cost. So we've added that assumption in here. Now it could be different for different municipalities. You can use different assumptions here, but that's the assumption we have used uh, based on the Sherman Durgus model. That is what we're using for facilities investment need. So we've added this tab for facilities to calculate the operating cost, which is the o &M by unit, and also calculate the total cost of ownership. And we did go with the um, tab four. We did look at the tab four as well in our workshop one, which was talking about how to use this Sherman Durgus model where we do not have BCAs for facilities. If we have BCAs, it's a different concept. But if we don't have BCAs, we can actually use these templates or use the Sherman Durgus model to come up with the investment needs. And we have summarized our stuff in here where you know we have the 10 years, we have deferred maintenance that will calculate from here. 
and also what the FCI is going to be, the current FCI and the projected FCI in 10 years time. So you can do the facility modeling by a facility, so each facility, or you can do it by an asset class. So like, for example, operations yard, you could have put here as operations yard, and then all the information that is required here, like let's say for a current replacement value would be an aggregate of all the yards uh, under the uh, ops. So we have added a few more templates in here based on uh, your facilities, and it would be easier to calculate your investment needs if you don't have the BCAs. What we had in this template was also if you had a combination, so facilities that would have BCAs and facilities that would not have BCAs. We have actually removed that template from this tab and we have actually made it much simpler and added it to tab five. So any questions so far? Because what I just covered was what we did um, in workshop one. Tabs one to four was already covered in um, workshop one and this is workshop two. So I'll be starting from tab three. Any questions so far? If not, then I'll continue. Okay, so tab five is gonna be talking about life cycle strategy. So what we added in here under tab three for process, that when all these rehabilitations or refurbishment activities are gonna happen, these cycles are actually incorporated here. So when we have a urban road, when you add the information in here from your asset strat from your uh, uh, assets registry, what you require is the asset ID, which is unique ID, your asset name, so the road of the the name of the road, the installation or the construction date, the length, which is in kilometers, and then these would be calculated by itself. It's similar concept that we used in the workshop one where I said, if these cells are highlighted orange, those are pre-populated fills. These formulas in there, so you don't have to touch those. Where we need information is on the yellow cells. So these are the cells where you would input your information on the roads. The other stuff is all calculated and it's linked to your tab three. So based on your strategy here that you've put in, it will basically calculate your investment needs for each year. And it will at the end give you a total as well. And at the end, we have actually added on 100 years, you know, how much the requirement is gonna be, your 10 year, and when this asset is actually gonna retire. So when this asset is going to be replaced. So for example, if we had our first road that needs to be replaced, what we've done here is we've added another row in here. So if this one gets replaced, we've added another line here and we've graded it out to basically identify that this is an addition. So once this road gets retired, we will be replacing or reconstructing. And that's how you calculate your needs again. So when the needs are gonna be, which is gonna be 40,000 in your uh, life cycle up to the 2021. So it will tell you in 2071, your first road is going to retire. So your expenditure will only be up to 2071, which is here when you're gonna replace it. The second road, which will come in, will start from 2074 because our life cycle strategy says we would be doing crack ceiling at third year. So this is when it's gonna be replaced. And then in the third year is when that investment is gonna come up. So this is how your uh, process will be working. We also added another table here for facilities. So this information was initially put into tab four facilities investment model. So we've removed it from there and we've actually added it in here to make it more simpler. What we have is similar information as the process. We need the asset name. We need the current replacement value of those buildings, the gross floor area, asset ID, the construction date, 
if there was any deferred maintenance, any previous investments that were done, and it will calculate the FCI, the age, and the estimated service life, which is information that was already input in here. It will grab all the information from this tab. So this information that we have here is for facilities that has BCAs. So if you have BCAs done, you can actually input them in here. This is gonna be manual. For the facilities that doesn't have BCAs, the information is going to come from this tab, the facilities investment model. It will automatically add your information in here. Once you add which facility it is, it will give you all the information in here. So you can basically separate out the facilities that has BCAs, what the requirements are, you know, facilities that are new, and then it will also give you a total as a portfolio what the information, what the re requestment, what the reinvestment needs are. And it will also give you a current FCI as a portfolio, how this portfolio is doing. Any questions on this? No, I'm gonna move on. So once this and reinvestment calculations are done, we move on to the next step, which is going to talk about the 10 year financing by asset class. So what we just did here in tab five, that information, tab five and actually the operations and maintenance costs that we calculated will be put in here. Now, this is again automated. So you put your process or your asset class in here, it will give you what the operating investments are based on what we had input in tab one, your capital investments. Now these are gonna be from your tab five, the life cycle investments that are required. And then it will give you a total for year one, similar to facilities as well. This information is coming from tab five by asset class. And this information is for 10 years. It will give you a total in here. And what we have added is also a chart here to show you what the investments are going to be. What we've also added is proposed investments. So these are basically your requirements based on your life cycle strategies. But what we have here is proposed investments. So how much would you be putting in your budget? Once you have the information on the budget, you will be able to say where the gaps are or how much the gap is. So the gap between how much is available and how much is actually required is the funding gap. So you will be able to see how much the funding gaps are in here. If we increase this, you know, it will increase the, it will reduce the funding gap. So this is what you have to prepop you have to populate in here or enter the information based on your capital budgets or your asset management plans. So this will give you information on an asset class for 10 year financing. Any questions on this? No. Um, Troy, sorry, do you want me to go ahead for the uh, tab seven as well? Yes, please. Uh, go just ahead. Okay. Ahead, show how it all looks together. Sure, no problem. So these tab seven is going to be more of a standalone uh, tab where you want to add all the asset class, all this information that you have done by asset class. You want to put that in here in tab seven. So all these asset classes, different asset classes, you would have these same spreadsheets. Add those in here. So any uh, asset classes that are covered under tax rate or funded by the tax rate, you want to add them in, in here. So you can see as a, the, as a whole to, on the tax side, how much reinvestments are required, how much gap it's there on the tax side. So we've added a few examples in here, like the roads, bridges, noise walls, and on the facilities, we've added headquarters, paramedic reporting stations. So again, this is going to be by year one, two, and up to 10 years. What we need information is on the reserve side because what you've done here is just reinvestment needs. What we also wanna look at is the reserves as well. Do we have enough reserves or not? So what we require is your opening reserve balance. 
so your opening reserve balance on the tax side, and then annual revenue. So here you can add whatever revenue that you may be getting. Now these revenue can change as well. So if you think that over time these revenues are gonna change, you can actually input that in here. It will not screw up the formula. So the annual revenue is added in here, and then these annual reinvestments will be coming from here. This table that has already calculated, those reinvestments are gonna come here. And then the difference between the annual revenue and the reinvestment requirement, if the revenue is higher than the actual requirement, that portion, the net balance, if it's positive, that net balance, we would actually add uh, half a year interest on it and add it to the revenue. That's an assumption we have done. Now, all municipalities will have different assumptions and the assumptions are actually put in here. So based on each municipality's assumptions, you can change these assumptions as well. And then it will give you an ending balance. So you have your opening, you add your revenues, you deduct your annual reinvestments, and you would come up to end balance. This gets carried over to the second year and same concept applies up to the end of the year where it'll tell you it at the end of the 10th year, this is what your ending balance is going to be and which will show up in here. So all this also shown in here in the chart format. So again, to see, you know, on tax base side, you know, in year one, what are the requirements and what do we actually have? What funding do we have? So same thing that we did by asset class, we're gonna be doing it overall on the tax side as well. So all the asset classes will be input in here. Now you can add more lines in here or any templates that we have here, additional rows can be added. My only thing is, or the hint that I would give is do not go to the end row to add any uh, extra rows, go in the middle and then just copy and insert copy. So all the formulas still stay. And even at the totals or subtotals, that formula, that row will be added automatically in the formulas. If you add at the end, then the total may not include it. So we have tried adding more uh, rows in here. So just in case you need to add any more rows, like even here, we've added more rows in here. So if you had to just copy and then insert copied. So it will already have the formulas in here copied and it will be added in here at the end as well. And I think that's the end of my presentation.